This episode was made possible by a cabinet of fever dreams. Please consider supporting them by following the link in the description below. On the very first day we arrived, she saw them. She saw them, she warned me, and I told her she was just tired from the drive. We had just finished unpacking and making sure our lodgings were in working order. I had warned her that things can get rough in the mountains, but to my surprise, nothing in the cabin was broken. The pipes seemed to have survived the winter, the lights didn't flicker, and we even managed to keep a weak signal with the world outside, courtesy of a router hung up in an apple tree. Not a twenty-minute hike from the cabin sat a hillside meadow I discovered on my previous research trip. I'd shown her pictures before, but they were nothing compared to the genuine article. Off in the distance stood the snow-tipped Tatra Mountains, and beneath them, like a sapphire pushed into unkempt grass, sat a beautiful blue lake. Even though it was a short hike, I grabbed a bag with necessities just in case. The mosquito repellent and water came in handy, but once we settled down in the grass, Veronica noted the absence of one important supply. It's so nice to get away from the city, she said, stretching out on the green as if it were a king-size bed. But you know what I could use right now? A beer. She protested when I got up, said that it wasn't worth the bother, but to say the truth, I wanted a beer myself. It had been a long drive, after all. When I left her there, Veronica was enveloped in an aura of relaxation. She was ecstatic to have gotten out of the city. She was enjoying her vacation. She was happy. By the time I returned, her calmness had considerably waned. There's no such thing as flying snakes, right? She asked, picking at the grass. I mean... I know that's not a thing. Just want to be sure. Thought a flock flew by a couple minutes ago. Might just be seeing things, though. I laughed. Flying snakes were a thing, I told her. Gliding snakes, more accurately. Chrysopelia, more specifically. They did exist around Thailand and Cambodia, and Laos. Surely she would not have seen a flock of them in Slovakia. Do they have wings? The snakes I saw had wings. She said. I laughed again. I told her she was just seeing things. There were no such things as winged snakes. On the very first day she arrived, she saw them. She saw them, and I told her she was just tired from the drive. In the morning, I checked the patchy feet on the trail cams. I was meant to be observing the behavior of the local lynx population but all of them seemed camera shy. When we went out for our hike in the afternoon, I didn't see any trace of them either. In fact, the forest seemed wholly abandoned. No rustling in the bushes, no tracks, no scat. Couldn't even hear any birds nearby. For the first couple of days, I kept my reports plain and convinced myself the arrival of the truck had the local wildlife hiding. When no signs of life presented in a week, however, I contacted my colleagues from the other research sites. Plenty of movement on our side, they said. You enjoyed the peace. The sudden, unexplainable dead zone should have given me pause, but it didn't. All the hours I saved not having to deal with tracking gave me more time to spend with Veronica. I made an active decision not to question my new influx of leisure time. Every once in a while, she had to take a work call with her team back home, but the jittery connection from the apple tree made those occurrences mercifully short. We spent our days together and our nights by the fireplace. Times were good. About two weeks into our tranquil stay, I found a dead boar by the lake. He'd been dead for a while, but there were still visible bifurcated teeth marks. For a moment, I considered a pack of flying vipers pecking the animal to death. But I let that go. I knew there were no such thing as flying snakes. A couple days after, I saw a group of squirrels scamper up a tree. That calmed me further. The trail cameras still showed no sign of life, but I didn't let that bother me too much. I was just happy spending time with Veronica. 
who kept each other distracted and pleased. Until yesterday. There were problems back at work for her, so she wanted to be out of cell phone signal to avoid responsibility. I still had some reports to put together, so Veronica decided to take a walk alone. When she left the cabin, she seemed excited to get some calm time. By the time she returned, Veronica was terrified. I saw them. They're real. When she rushed into the cabin, she shut all the windows and barred the door. After a brief pace around the room, she even shut the cover of the fireplace. Out on the trail, a flock of flying snakes. At first I thought she was kidding, but my laughter only deepened her agitation. I tried my best to get her to explain further, but each repetition of the story only made her more panicked. She had seen flying snakes. Twice. They swooped at her this time. They meant her harm. She wanted both of us to get out of the woods immediately. The trail camera showed her fright as well, but they were vague about the source of it. Much like the internet connection hiding in the apple tree, the image was spotty. On the screens I could see Veronica. I could see her wide open eyes and flailing hands in terror. What she was screaming at, however, was just a blur. Are you sure it isn't just a bunch of bees or something? The words left my mouth without much thought. All of my attention was focused on the resisting the idea of winged serpent. I didn't mean any offense with my suggestion. The fuzzy images on the screen could have been, realistically, a particularly large swarm of bees. I meant no offense with my suggestion, but that didn't matter. She became furious. If I wanted to get bit to death by a bunch of flying snakes, that was my imperative. She, however, wanted out. If I wasn't going to drive her to the nearest airport immediately, she would drive herself. I could take the bus to the city when it was my time to go home. It was getting dark out. I told Veronica I wouldn't risk our lives on the hilly roads. If she still felt strongly in the morning, I would drive her. There was some resistance, but she finally acquiesced. Veronica spent the entire evening scrolling on her phone, looking for flights. I spent it staring at the blurry shapes on the trail cam, trying to convince myself that there's no such thing as winged snakes. She was all packed by the time I woke up. There was a dirt cheap flight back home waiting for her in the city. The drive was made in complete silence. Only the static hiss, intercut with occasional muffled radio signals, kept us company. And it was only once we pulled up to the Poprad Tatri airport that she spoke to me. Look, she said, meeting my eyes for the first time since the argument. I know what I saw. Snakes with wings. The only animals in that forest are snakes with wings. You shouldn't be out there alone. There were still free seats on the flight. Some airline I had never heard of. Infinitely cheaper than the original return trip. The price was almost tempting, but I told Veronica I had to stay the full three months of my research commitment. I told Veronica I'd be safe up in the cabin. I'd be safe in the cabin because I was experienced, well supplied, and there's no such thing as flying snakes. When I rejected her claims in the car, all the love faded from her eyes. I wanted to keep her company until she had to check in, but the moment she walked into the airport, she had to take the work call. She spent her last moments alone in a meeting a thousand miles away. She warned me over and over again, and I never believed her. The last thing she told me before she went into the security check was to be careful. I wish I had listened. I got back in the late afternoon and went straight to the trail cameras again. I'd intended to look more closely at the blurry shots once more, but when I sat down at the screens, I noticed there was some new footage. The cameras had captured another animal in the forest. It wasn't a winged snake, but it was no less worrying. One of the cameras caught a lynx. At first, I was happy to see a normal animal. I found a semblance of calm in the image, yet the more I looked at the image, the more I realized that there was something wrong with the lynx. It was staggering as if it was drunk. It was bloated. The ballooned-up lynx collapsed near one of the cameras, presumably dead. 
Without even grabbing my backpack, I set out to check the carcass. The moment I saw the lynx with my own eyes, I knew the creature had met an unnatural fate. The lynx's fur was sparse, and the flesh beneath sickly bluish. Its eyes were bulging out of its sockets and were covered with a diseased yellow film. The source of the lynx's suffering was crystal clear. Teeth marks. The animal was covered in bifurcated teeth marks. The indentations were much deeper than any local animal would suggest, but they were unmistakable. The lynx had been bitten to death by snakes. I was going to examine the carcass further, but a rustling in the trees above quickly wiped those plans away. The sound was faint at first, but with every second I stood in that forest, I could hear it louder and louder. Hissing. Something was hissing above me. I ran back to the safety of the cabin as fast as I could. In my sprint through the darkening forest, my mind had changed. The absurdity of Veronica's visions of winged snakes no longer seemed to be so absurd. She warned me. She warned me oh so many times, but I didn't start to listen until it was too late. When I returned back to the cabin, I sent out a flurry of reports. I restated my worry about the forest being void of the usual wildlife, and then, scarcely believing my own words, I started to detail the sightings of the winged snakes. By the time I was done sending out my maddening messages, it was dark outside. Usually, I would spend my nights reading a book by the fireplace, yet I couldn't find it within me the calmness to light a fire, let alone read a book. No responses to my messages came. Yet, that was to be expected. The other researchers had the same tenuous connection to the outside world as I. I knew I'd be lucky to get any response from anyone within the next three days. I tried calling her when I first got into the cabin, but her phone was off. All of her attempts to contact her went straight to the voicemail. Desperately wanting to speak to her, to hear her voice, to tell her I had made a mistake in not believing the things she had said, the things she had seen with her own eyes. Yet when her phone showed no signs of ringing, I decided to send her a voice message. It's while I spoke to her that I first registered the sounds from the fireplace. Thuds. Something was bumping against the fireplace cover, but I was far too distracted pouring my heart out into my phone. I told Veronica I was wrong to have doubted her. I told her about the links and the teeth marks, and even about the dead boar I had found just a couple weeks into our stay. I told her she was right, and to my own surprise, I found myself promising I would leave the cabin come morning. Saying that I would retreat back into the safety of the city lifted a terrible weight off my chest, but within moments that heaviness returned with renewed strength. The voice message wouldn't send. On closer inspection, I realized the internet had been knocked out. The little green light from the apple tree that assured me that the router was working had been extinguished. Beyond the window, all I could see was darkness. I'd never been scared walking through the woods at night. One has to be cautious and alert and prepared, but fear does nothing to help. I've never been scared walking through the woods at night. But when I got out of the cabin to check on the router, I was terrified. I grabbed a flashlight so that I could see what I was about to make my way towards. And just as I was about to leave, the thudding sounds from the fireplace became more pronounced. I didn't check on them. It was starting to dawn on me that something was moving inside of the fireplace, but I wanted to deal with my problems one at a time. It was the thuds from the fireplace that made me grab the hatchet when I left the cabin. That hatchet, I am certain, is the only reason why I am not a corpse yet. It all happened so quickly. The moment I aimed the light at the router, I could see that it was wrapped in a mess of scales. Just as the reality of what I was seeing dawned on me, the scale shifted. Through the night, through the sheer darkness, the winged snakes leapt in my direction. The sight of the flying reptile shot a wave of adrenaline through my system. With no thought but an animalistic demand for survival, I cut the snake down. Then, with nothing but a horrid drumbeat of my heart bouncing in my skull, I hacked away at the monstrosity with a hatchet. Veronica had been right. 
What lay at my numb legs was a massive snake covered in wings. The creature's innards shimmered like glitter beneath the force of the flashlight, but I did not observe them for long. I ran. I ran back to the cabin, hoping to survive until the morning. It wasn't until I had shut and barred the door that I realized how futile my fight had been. I might have killed the snake that lurched at me by the apple tree, yet there were many, many more. It wasn't until I was out of breath and covered in the guts of an unidentifiable freak of nature that I took a look at the fireplace. Behind the yellow, charred glass of the fireplace cover, they stared at me. Horrid reptilian eyes. There were dozens of them, slithering, ramming their heads against the cover of the fireplace, trying to get in. The few images that had been transmitted onto the cameras before the connection went out paint a terrible picture. These freaks of nature, these winged serpents, they are descending onto the cabin from every corner of the forest. Even now, I can see their eyes shine outside, waiting for an opportunity to attack. She warned me. She warned me, oh, so many times. She warned me, and I wish I had listened. This story is part of a series, one that is linked in the description below and continues on another channel.